Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and ting and ting and ting. Back with some more vibe for all you, you know what I mean? And I'm telling you, with everything that's going on this year, you have everybody saying the worst year ever, the worst year ever. You know what I mean? And uh, it got me thinking, you know what I mean? Back in the times, what did people call the worst year ever? What happened then to make people think that the year they're living in is the worst year ever? You know, collectively speaking, because, you know, any one individual could say this is the worst year ever. But this year is a collective of people saying this is the worst year ever because of what's going on. And we all know what's going on. So I wanted to see, hey, what year did people think were the worst year ever back in a day and thing? You know what I mean? So I uh, I went to digging and I found uh, this one that says, yeah, 536 was the worst year ever to be alive. What happened then? What one? What make them think that that was the worst bumbleclot year that ever lived? That, that anybody ever lived? So let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Sim and let's see what they believe in their time to be the worst year ever. Gets tossed around a lot these days, mostly on the internet, and for reasons like I was disappointed in the latest Star Wars movie. <laughs> but scientists and historians have actually argued that no year in the long history of this planet was worse than the year 536. While sure, there have been plenty of worthy contenders for the worst year ever over the course of history, no single year has had more of a measurably bad impact for the decades that followed. Today we're going to explain why the year 536 was the worst year to be alive. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel. Oh, and leave a comment too and let us know what piece of history you would like us to explain next. Okay, now let's settle this once and for all. Year 536, worst year ever. While serving as a military advisor to Belisarius, one of the Byzantine Empire's most distinguished generals, Byzantine historian Procopius noticed some trouble was brewing in the air while traveling with his boss in Sicily in the year 536. He wrote of a sun that gave forth light without brightness, during like the moon, during this whole year, and it seemed exceedingly like the sun in eclipse. For the beams it shed were not clear, nor such as it is accustomed to shed. Translated, it was all dark outside, like all the time. He, of course, wasn't the only one to notice the sun appeared to be in a mood during 536. Michael the Syrian, a Byzantine scribe, would later write of this period, the sun became dark and its darkness lasted for 18 months. Each day it shone wow. for about four hours, and still this light was only a feeble shadow. Everyone declared that this sun would never recover its full light. The fruits did not ripen, and the wine tasted like sour Oh, grapes. wow. This wishy-washy sun situation cast a non-metaphorical dark cloud over the globe that darkened the sky for at least a full year in 536. Researchers later discovered evidence of a massive volcanic eruption, whose ash was likely a major contributor to the Seattle-like weather, minus all the rain, spreading ash and destruction on a global scale. Not to mention it made the grapes sour and the wine bad, so that's an easy strike for the year 536. <laughs> Basic biology teaches us that plants need the sun to aid in their growth and survival. So not having direct sunlight for the duration of at least a year did a real number on the crop output around the world and sparked a widespread famine around the globe. And it's not just that the plants wanted to catch their rays, it was just too darn chilly for crops to grow. With the sun cloaked in an endless cloud, the temperature of the earth dropped between 1.6 and 2.5 degrees Celsius or 34.88 to 36.5 degrees Fahrenheit, for all the Americans thinking that doesn't sound so bad. But it also cooled temperatures for decades to come. Crop scarcities were reported far and wide around this time period, including Ireland, who suffered through their own horrible-sounding food depletion they called bread failure. Wow! A dusty veil covering the sun wasn't the only bad thing in the air for these poor people just trying to live their lives in 536. There was also a plague or two waiting in the wings to strike on these vitamin D deprived immune systems. Nobody was immune to this infestation. It swept through the lower classes all the way to the imperial palace. Symptoms, as it was lovingly described, began with a sore that formed on the palm of the hand and progressed until the afflicted one could not take a step. The legs swelled, <laughs> then the buboes burst, and pus came out. 
Obviously, if this same plague were to infect the world today, there would probably be a TV show called Dr. Pupos, Pus Buster, and with it, a new contender for the worst year to be alive. With the plague beginning to make the rounds in Constantinople, the city began to stink. What with the piles of dead, sick bodies wow. that were sort of being tossed around into the sea only to resurface later. There wasn't a lot of burial planning going around back then. Bring it up to date! It was more of a wing it vibe around the Justinian plague. Emperor Justinian ordered the bodies to be removed from the city. I'm not dead! There! He said he's not dead! Yes, he is. I'm not dead! But all that did was expose more people to the disease, as healthy people were responsible for moving deceased sickly bodies out of the cities. Things weren't all bad for Emperor Justinian, though, as the plague that took all of these lives and made the city a smelly nightmare would later be named the Plague of Justinian, so that was probably nice for him, less so for the estimated 50 million people that died from Woo! it. Wow. Around 536, the climate in China started its journey into madness, doing perfectly normal things like raining dust you could scoop into your hands. Not only should it not rain dust, it certainly shouldn't be measurable by the scoop hole. The Nan Shi, a 6th century chronicle, reported a yellow ash-like substance falling from the sky. They named their freak weather Hui, or dust, and said it was yellow in color. Whether this was volcanic ash or just some random, unexplained climate reaction is not known. However, this was just the beginning of China's climate disruption. The chronicles of the southern dynasties reported on a rare summer-winter weather event, with frost in the midsummer and snow in August. Like a Southern California girl in Chicago in January, the crops were not here for this cold snap. Summer crops were destroyed, and the city of Xinchou, along with others, were thrown into a deadly famine that lasted for two years and resulted in the deaths of around 70 to 80 percent of the population. Wow. That is crazy. Researchers discover evidence deep in the ice sheets of Iceland and Greenland that indicated a major volcanic event occurred around 536. Volcanic eruptions in Iceland in 540 and 547 thrust people into the literal dark ages. With ash lining the skies and blocking out the shiny hot sun thing in the sky that the people of the 6th century were starting to get used to having around. Based on a tropical volcanic ash later discovered, some scholars have suggested a volcano in El Salvador went blasting off around the year 535 or 536. Still others pointed to a volcanic eruption in North America as a contributor to the dark skies around the world. When combined with the two Icelandic volcano eruptions, it kicked off what was adorably called the Late Antique Little Ice Age. This cute little ice age cooled off the planet for at least a decade and resulted in the death of crops and subsequently people. Both directly through starvation and indirectly, a malnourished population was more susceptible to diseases, of which there were plenty running around. Well, there's one thing that certainly couldn't claim it had a bad year, exploding volcanoes. Mother Nature, man! By the time the 6th century rolled around, the Roman Empire had migrated east to Constantinople. And, under the guiding hand of Emperor Justinian, the Romans sought to get back to the glory days of the Empire. Much like a high school graduate who still hangs around campus and wears their letterman jacket. I mean, it is pretty cool. Though some of Justinian's generals saw success in this cool goal, most notable Belisarius, who fought against several different armies, including Goths, Vandals, and others, Justinian himself couldn't mirror the success due to constant uprisings and imperial instability. Those pesky uprisings always getting in the way of success. To add sickness to war defeats, the Byzantine Empire would never fully recover from the disease and famine sparked by the events of 536. The Byzantine Empire lost between 35 to 55 percent of their population in wow. the year 541, once the bubonic plague moved in and did what the plague did best, kill depressingly high percentages of entire populations. Historians believe the plague could have been transported by plague-infested rats hitching a ride on military trains during this attempt to bring the Roman Empire back to its peak, which clearly backfired. <laughs> The horribleness of 536 didn't discriminate. The Moshe civilization of Peru wouldn't count 536 as their banner year either. The Moshe civilization, a once dominant force in the region, were known to be avid fishermen and developers of an advanced irrigation system that allowed a variety of crops to grow. Their agricultural talents were the backbone of their economy, but the weather conditions in the 6th century caused their pocketbooks to take a deep hit. 
It was around this time that an unusually strong El Nino weather system caused waters to warm, which decimated the fish supply. The freak weather system also caused heavy flooding, which ruined their irrigation systems and devastated their ability to grow enough food to feed their people. People, probably tired of listening to Twitter users claim X and X was the worst year ever, a group of scholars set out to set the record straight once and for all. Harvard historian Michael McCormick and a group of scholars decided to science their way out of the age-old question, what was the worst year to be alive? Initially, however, this was not the ultimate goal of McCormick and his group of 12 interdisciplinary scholars. The group came together to study metal usage, coinage, and changes to the 7th century monetary systems. Somewhere in this thrilling subject matter, one probably began to ponder if they were living in the worst year to be alive. Their findings included an analysis of volcanic fragments from an Icelandic volcano in ice core samples from Swiss glaciers that, yes, dated back to 536, confirming the volcanic event that thrusted a good portion of the northern hemisphere into unprecedented darkness, setting off a global catastrophe. Yeah, but in 1998, both Armageddon and Deep Impact were released, and people had to choose between which two asteroid-based action movies they liked best. That's a tough year. The planet left behind plenty of evidence of climate trauma that resulted in a chain of climate events that spiraled over into real human suffering. Remember, we only get one Earth, everyone. Please recycle. Dendrochronologists, people who study tree rings to determine a tree's age, since that's a science and not a wild guess, noticed some disturbing patterns emerging when examining Icelandic trees. The rings indicated a period when the tree's growth had slowed, suggesting a significant cooldown had occurred around the middle of the 6th century. This, combined with the newly unearthed ice core evidence discovered in 2018, helped date the time of the catastrophic event that ruined Earth for a little bit, to the year 536. In researching for the worst year to be alive, things weren't always so bleak. In fact, the research started by our friends at Harvard ended on a positive note. While the events of 536 were the spark for some truly literal dark days in our planet's history, the researchers were also able to find the moments things really started to turn around. When researching coinage, they noticed the reappearance of lead in the ice core samples indicating that people were producing silver again for money. Ah, capitalism. The life force of us all. <laughs> Experts argued the prevalence of silver meant more coins were being produced, which was a sign of a thriving economy. The lesson being, as bad as it may seem, it will almost always get better. Almost always. So what do you think? Would you like to go into a time machine and play the ultimate... Wow. That's crazy. That, that was the whole world, yo. And that was Mother Nature. That we could see because I mean, what's happening now, we really can't see it except for the aftermath of uh, the destruction it's causing. But a volcano boom, darkness all over the world, and thing. And wow, the worst year ever 536. It's that's definitely it. That's got to be it because the, that, what's happening now can appeal in comparison to then. And we survived it. See, people have all these doomsday stuff going on. But we've been surviving crazy stuff all through these times. Nature will just do crazy stuff and we have to survive it or we have to try to survive it. The point is, are we going to survive each other? Because our, because we've gotten so selfish now that we're not really taking care of each other. Are we going to survive each other? See, I bet those people went and they just helped each other out and stuff like that and that's how we survived. You know what I'm saying? Thank you all for uh, watching this with me, man. You know what I mean? This this was interesting. So these days before you go, oh, woe is me, you know, woe is me. This vibe is just killing me. I mean, this is this is stressful. You know, it really is. However, just think all that we have survived already. And now we have modern technology and medicine and stuff, you know, to sort of curb things from getting worse. You know what I mean? You just have to make some common sense decisions and all of that to try to make it better. I mean, I know a lot of people are not going to like this statement, but wear a mask. We have nothing else right now. We have nothing else right now. Just wear a mask. It's not going to kill you. People have been wearing masks forever. You know what I mean? And, and they didn't die out because of wearing a mask. And nobody used the mask to control them or make them do their bidding. What's coming, what's, what, what's attacking us, our bodies, that's going to make us do it bidding in the long run. 
you see what I mean? I say and things. I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description so you could go check it out, check out the channel, see what else they have there and thing, you know what I mean? And uh hey, if you don't know where you're coming from, you don't know where you're going. Take care of each other.